Okay guys, what are the top five RV problems and how do you prevent them? Let's find out. Hey guys, I am Mark with The Art of RVing. If you're not a subscriber, become a subscriber. Hit that red, I don't know, subscribe button somewhere around here. And hit us up on Instagram, Art of RVing. Today, we have an awesome show for you. I have an RV expert here to talk about the top five common RV problems and what you can do to prevent them. So, let's do it. Hey guys, I'm Mark. And this is Chris with Texas RV Works. Right, Chris? That's right. And we've known each other. We go way back. How long have we known each other? Oh, I don't know. What, five, six weeks? Yeah, five, six weeks. We go way back. Tell me about you, Chris. We uh, own Texas RV Works here in Longview, Texas. Uh, 14,000 square foot facility. Uh, we do it all top and bottom, front and back. Yep. Uh, done Manfred's tent camper, uh, custom coach. And we had a little chat this morning about the top five common problems that Chris sees on a yearly basis, I guess, yeah. a monthly a basis. Really probably. monthly, weekly basis. I right. mean, these are just the things that people call about when we get them pointed in the right direction and they come in for repair. Now, this will be so. interesting. Starting with number five to the most common problem is electronics. Tell me a little bit about that. That is, that is correct. Uh, anything from ACs, um, to your heating systems, refrigerators, those always seem to be big items. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you have hot water heaters, it's keeping the mud daubers out. Same with your furnace, keeping the mud daubers out. Mm -hmm. uh, pulling the covers on your AC and cleaning out the condensers oh, on them. Mm -hmm. Those are very big problems that won't cool correctly. Right. Um, but another one is the GFI um, that runs any place that has an outlet near water. So that'd be outside outlets or under kitchen bathroom, right? right. People will call in and ask, I don't have electricity oh, on one side of my camper. The right. GFI is tripped or the GFI is bad. Yeah, well, we've all done that. <laughs> and now we know yeah. we'll have to check that first, right? Yep. And so how would you prevent it? Like you would clean your air conditioner and you would like, electronics, that's a tricky one, right? Because it you is. can't really do any maintenance to. No, that, that, that's right. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of maintenance, but it's keeping the coils behind the refrigerator cleaned out. Oh, okay. You know, been your furnace cleaned out, you know, uh -huh. if you have pets and like that, pet mm -hmm. dander and all that right. stuff, uh, create an efficiency problem. And this is another big one. Don't fill up your water tank and have your electric hot water heater on because it'll burn up the electrode. And it's simple things uh, that, mm -hmm. uh, it's just maintenance items. I think a lot of times right. we don't do maintenance. We get tied up into the camping thing and we'll do it don't want to, Right. So, and then you pay the price. And then you pay and the then price. And then they come see Chris. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, just real quick, would you uh, suggest to drain your uh, water heater every single time you come in, or would that be once a quarter or no, a season? Or? I would I would be draining your hot water heater. You know, it, it depends on how much you're using it, but you mm -hmm. should be draining that once a quarter. And, Just drain it out. And on top, of that, I saw some people where they had the wand, they stick in there, and they clean it out. Yeah. Is that something you would suggest, or is that something? I've never done it. We've always we we just always opened up the plug, let it drain out. I have to. I've never cleaned yeah. it out. I've just always let it I come. I think that's going a little overboard. I got you. Um, a lot of them are glass lined today, aluminum versus steel. Right. Um, they, they tend to last better historically right. and not rot out. Okay, so number four, making it to the number one problem that you have is water, water leaks. leaks. Tell us about that. Come from any place, and so that's from your from your water system, PEX piping, mm -hmm. uh, loose clamps, um, it, you know, here in the Texas Great Freeze, right. broken water pipes. Right. Um, so that that's a huge one there, leaky water heaters. Mm -hmm. But the next one is, you know, the big leaks come from the roof. Right. And right. I always say, uh, if you're up on it, you should be up on your roof, check in um, all the sealants on it mm -hmm. once a quarter. Yes. And if you, you keep the water out, the rest of the coach will take care of itself. That's a big deal. We spend a People spend a lot of money on water damage needlessly. Right Front cap, back caps are, are historically yeah. the habitual offenders. That's what you were telling me. And then yeah. uh, loose ACs, you know, if the AC's not drawn to the roof uh -huh. uh, tight, uh -huh. it can get water up underneath the membrane. You'll never see it up until the point that you have water dripping I see. the same side. So really replace your AC uh, seals every two years down here. Uh, um, hmm. and, and the reason for that is to keep them it's just a foam seal under mm -hmm. there and keep them pliable. Uh, again, 
you get a big watershed like we get here in East Texas, mm -hmm. they can come the other way. You can slip right underneath that seal. Woo! So, Interesting, man. Yeah. So water. Water. Number Water's four. A big deal. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, so number three, I never thought about this before until you told me, Chris, because you're the expert. Uh, slide alignment. Yeah. You see that a lot? Tell me about yep. that. So in most most of the issue there falls under electric slide issues. Mm -hmm. But Schwintech is a really big one where one side will move and the other side won't. And is that with the cable? The uh, Schwintech, or is that with the uh, rams under that, That's No, that'll be, uh, it'll have four rails on the side. There's motors that run internal to the wall that move that slide in and out I independently. I see. And they have to be timed right. So we get a bunch of phone calls on how to I can't get my slide in or I can't get it out. One right. side's going out farther. Uh -huh. And we we tell people over the phone how to uh, get that realigned. How do you? I mean, is it complicated to get that It's not. Line? It's resetting the system. And basically, you know, somewhat, there's two different styles, but uh, basically you'll run the system basically halfway in and out um, and realign it. But the first step is to reset the system and just start from ground zero. Ah, uh, I see. And yeah. if, if they have a bad motor, that's another one. Right. Um, we'll tell them how to pop the motor out of the sidewall so you can actually get somebody with you and push the sidewall. Uh, and that'll save you. Yep. All right, Chris, so we're working our way up the list of number two RV problems, common RV problems. Yep. Okay, well, I forgot what it was, uh, what is it? Uh, Suspension upgrades. Yes, okay, I have not even thought about that till today when we were talking, yep. Chris. So, uh, suspension upgrade, what is that? So, um, basically, you, you get in these big fifth wheels, and, and even travel trailers, they're put on minimal axles, mm -hmm. is as far as barely making capacity of right. what the coach weighs and a little bit of stuff in right. it. So, a big one is upgrading axles, upgrading spring packages, right. putting shock absorbers in, um, and we also upgrade um, the pickup itself, your tow vehicle. Uh, of course, because you do it so, all here. Yep. At Texas RV Works. Yep. Can't link below, by the way. Uh, and so, uh, if you just didn't want to do your axles and you just want to do your shocks and springs, yep. then that's going to be a huge difference. Yep. Um, How do you know when they're bad? You get to your destination, you realize everything's out of the cupboards all this stuff is going on so oh that's how you know because everything's yeah everything's falling all of a sudden you know your suspension is yep. weirded up okay so we have made it to number one yep and i think everybody probably knows yep. what that could be and that's going to be your roof seal yep all right lay it on us brother so i mean what we recommend down here is you need to be on your roof and checking seals mm -hmm. um, your your self-leveling die cores your ac seals mm -hmm. uh, around anything that's been cut into the roof so that skylights vents all that right you really got to be looking for that stuff mm -hmm. um, in this hot texas sun sure uh starts makes just makes them separate right. and that's that's infiltration of water side seams are, are a huge deal. When you say side seam, is that the seam that comes off of the railing, off yes, of the roof off, that comes down? That's your transition like the between side your of it. roof okay, right. and your sidewall, right? So check those. Yeah, oh, okay. make sure they're cocked up good. Uh -huh, right. um, so basically um, you walk your roof and you yep. check and see if it's separated from the dock core. Yep. But I, the edges are interesting because uh, you know that's hard to treat because yep. you're up there treating it, but the edges that run around yep. it, you can't, it's hard to get to yep. it when, with the brush. Yep. So it, that was probably important because that's where it goes yeah, down into the coach. That's where it's going to start infiltrating your coach down the sidewall. Uh, uh, there, it's, yeah. it's immediate access and mm -hmm. you know on a standard side rail you could have 50 screws, 60, 70 screws down through the side of your coach. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's a big deal. No, that's awesome. Yeah. So number one, of course, water. Yeah, water. Yeah, that's it. Chris, I appreciate Keep, you, brother. Yep. Check out Texas RV Works below. Shoot Chris a call. Get you his phone number in there. We'll check you.